Hello, this is Josh from Watch All About with another watch review. I've always been an admirer of Bremont with their British base and heritage, gentlemanly design and high levels of craftsmanship, but they've always eluded me until now. As soon as they reached out, I was more than happy to check out anything they sent my way. They decided to send the S302, a 40mm vintage inspired professional dive watch. I took one look and knew I'd have a good time checking it out. Let's have a look. Bremont assembles its timepieces in the new Bremont Manufacturing and Technology Center, also known as The Wing. According to their site, this enables the full machining and manufacturing of Bremont's watches. When you think about it, it's pretty impressive stuff that they make so much of a watch on British soil to such a high spec, but keep their prices relatively similar to the other luxury watches around the same market. So is it worth 3,000 295 pounds, or are you better off going Swiss for a similar price such as Oris? Let's have a look. I feel it makes sense to give special consideration to the aspects that make the watch and all Bremont watches stand out. The S302 features a stainless steel triptych case construction with scratch resistant DLC treated barrel. Bremont use their own case hardening process named b EBE 2000, which doesn't really roll off the tongue, where the metal is heat treated and diffused with carbon, then bombarded with electrons. The result, metal with a hardness rating of 2000 HV, which is seven times harder than standard steel and therefore more scratch resistant. And what's the name trip tick all about? I mean, the naming convention seems a bit unusual as in it doesn't really mean anything to me, but the cases are constructed in three parts. The top of the case bezel, the middle barrel and the case back. Whilst it doesn't mean you get any technological advantages, it does give Bremont watches a distinctive engineered look and feel and allows them to use a variety of colors and materials for the central barrel this one being DLC or diamond like carbon treated. Something that many would deem insignificant but has deeply impressed me is the crown. I mean, this thing is a delight. Excellent grip, a really lovely orange ring around the outside and the Bremont logo printed on the end. And it's just so smooth and silky to use as well. The domed scratch resistant sapphire crystal has nine layers of anti-reflective coating on the top and bottom, making it ultra hard wearing. Now top anti-reflective coating can scratch off and it can be you know, as horrible to look at as a massive ding on the side of your case, but Bremont hope to stop that from happening with their multiple layering approach. The movement within the Bremont S302 is the BA-93-2AV, which is basically a modified ETA-2892-A2. It's chronometer certified or COSC with 25 joules, a beach rate of 28.8 thousand beats per hour, so that's eight ticks per second, and a 38 hour power reserve. Well, what's been modified? It has a, bear with me here, it has a glue side door balance, an Anacron balance spring, and Niverflex 1 mainspring. These upgrades apparently make the movement more robust, accurate, and more anti-magnetic. It's also completely disassembled and modified in the wing on British soil. Their custom rotors are delightful too. So I'm pretty gutted that this watch has a solid case back rather than an exhibition one and therefore we can't see it. P51 vintage colored Superluminova has been used throughout with decent strength and longevity. Thus, we move on to the vintage aesthetics. The discolored sandy complexion has a definite antique feel to it, which is proving to be very popular at the moment. The hour markers, hands and bezel markings all work well together alongside the colored print work of the logo, minute track and 24 hour markings on the rehout. I must say it's all very well color coordinated. 
The shape of the nickel satin hands also complements the vintage feel, a modern take of a cathedral or sword crossover handset. The burnt orange GMT hand offers a bold foray away from this palette, offering ultimate legibility, which isn't overpowering. What's more, the date window at three has a very subtle indented border to it, providing a really clean transition between the dial and color matched date wheel. The unidirectional laser engraved ceramic bezel has a cool matte finish to it, and I particularly like the pip and triangle combo at 12. The markings are all super accurate, although please excuse the scuff on this one because it is a press loaner. This S302 is loaded on a Sahara Vintage leather strap, which is clearly very high quality, but it does take a little while to break in as it is reassuringly thick. The creamy color complements the coloring of the dial really well. What's great about luxury watches is that every part tends to be well thought out and the buckle is no exception. It's certainly not a regular tang buckle with beautiful sweeping lines, alternating finishes and chamfered edges. The Bramont logo is tastefully and elegantly engraved and painted on the top bar. The case back features a detailed embossing of a supermarine seaplane, the link between Bramont's aviation heritage and this being a professional dive watch. Again, good detailing and attention to detail here as expected. So what are my final comments on this watch? Well, a, a snip over £3,000, the Bramont S302 is firmly within luxury watch territory. And it's easy to see why. The whole thing has tremendous refinement through and through. Every aspect of the watch has been made the best it can be. The triptych case is a delight and the hardening means it will be ultra hard wearing. So too the nine layers of anti-reflective coating on the crystal. The crown in itself is a work of art. The overall design, sophisticated and perceptive. The leather strap, clearly thick and high quality, and whilst the COSE movement isn't fully in-house, it's modified to a high degree. All of that, as well as being British constructed, little wonder why it is the price it is. Now, when compared to another British brand, such as Christopher Ward and their brand new C63 Sealander, which in itself is a fantastic watch, the difference in quality is noticeable. I always like to include any negative points on my watch reviews, but I must admit it's difficult with the 302. Perhaps it could be a little bit slimmer, making it a little bit more wearable. Some ultimately might have a grumble about the price. There's no denying though that this is a lovely watch and I'm convinced the owners will be very pleased with their purchase. So thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, drop a comment on what you think of this watch too. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.